Today we're going to be talking about We're going to be talking about how to do that. It's an effect that can be done completely in camera, live, in Zoom meetings, on Twitch, whatever. It's actually pretty easy. So just, yeah, hold up. Now obviously destruction simulations are super cool and you can actually do it very easily. I'll show you how I did it in this video. But there's one thing about this that is really special and different than any other workflow. Normally you have to record that video, cut yourself out, maybe rotoscope. Maybe if you have a green screen, you can just cut yourself out really easily. What makes this special is that everything you saw was in camera. Now I don't, obviously my room is not exploded, so it's not in the actual camera sensor but everything's happening live with the camera feed. So if you're live streaming on Twitch, on YouTube, or if you're in a Zoom meeting or Google Hangouts call or whatever, you can have this happen from your direct camera feed in whatever you're using, even if it's just a webcam, you can have all that cool background stuff even without a green screen. Now we know that Zoom has this feature, but we also all know that it's total garbage. You would never use it for anything serious. It's also limited to Zoom, so you can't use it anywhere else really. So today I'm gonna to show you how to do two things, how to create a really awesome background of your space and do some crazy stuff with it, like we've done today, and how to use whatever you make as a video background and stick it behind you with something actually way more reliable than Zoom. That tool is called NVIDIA Broadcast. It just came out and it's free to download. I'll have a link down below if you wanna check it out. It's an amazing application that I've been waiting for for like a year since I saw it at TwitchCon last year. You can apply AI-based effects to your microphone, speakers, and your camera. The denoising tools are insane. So if you are on a Zoom call or if you're on stream or whatever you're doing and you've got kids running around, dogs barking, the air conditioning sound, or maybe the other person that you're talking to has all that going on, you can automatically filter all of that out and just hear voices. It's actually incredible. I've used it on stream before, it's wild. And the camera features are even cooler. So I have a link to my Twitter down below. Make sure you go follow me there because I posted a video with seven creative tips on how to use this. Just different interesting ways you can take advantage of this software. So I'll link to that down below as well. But the key here is that you can use this tool to cut yourself out of the background as if you had a green screen, even if you don't have one. There are other things you can do with it too, but the thing I wanna focus on today is replacing the background, but not just putting yourself in some tropical beach area, but putting yourself in a location that no one can tell you're even using the tool. So moving on, the main thing you're gonna need for this to work is a video to replace in your background. Now you can use literally anything. You can grab stock footage, you can just grab a YouTube video. You could even use a photo, so if you had a microphone in your shot and you didn't want it to be here, you can just paint it out in Photoshop and use that as a new background, cut it out. But if you wanna make something much more interesting, then that's what the rest of this video is for. So let me show you how I made this and how you can do it too fairly easily without a lot of experience and for free because that's pretty much exactly what I was looking for when I did this. There's also a little trick to getting the audio to work with this because NVIDIA Broadcast doesn't actually play the audio, so I'm gonna show you that little hack at the end of the video. In my workflow, I used Maya, Blender, Photoshop, After Effects, and Premiere, but you can use whatever you want. You don't have to use the same tools as me. The software doesn't matter. Let's jump in. First, I got a photo of my room from the angle that I wanted to do this. My camera is always in the same spot, so that was easy. I do recommend, however, doing it as a video because you'll get the pixel motion versus a static image. Videos always just look better for this kind of thing. But I just took a photo and it works just fine. Next thing you wanna do is match the camera. I actually started in Maya because I'm much more comfortable there and I wanted to model the chair in a software I knew what I was doing in. My big workflow tip here is when you are matching the camera, you might actually have the ground plane really funky and off-centered, and then it gets hard to place objects perfectly aligned with that. So what you can do is create a locator, take the camera and that ground plane and any geometry you've created, parent it to the locator, make sure that locator originally had the same offset, and then just put the locator back to a reasonable orientation, position, things like that. It will normalize everything because the camera is still attached to the geometry. It'll look perfect, but now when you create objects, it'll just create them in place on the ground plane without you having to try and match some weird orientation. Or if you're in Blender, apparently there's a tool called FSpy that does all this for you. I didn't know that at the time, so, you know. Whatever. At this point, go ahead and model all the major geometry you have in your scene. You don't have to make it perfect, but if you can match it the best you can, you'll have more options down the road. Next up is to reproject the image or video that you took onto the geometry as their texture. This only works well from the camera's point of view or close to it. I'm also not going to try and give you a full tutorial on that because I'm not the best at this. I just followed Ian Hebert's tutorial. So that's like down below if you're trying to figure out how to do this. He's the best. If you wanna do this a smarter way, the way I'm going to do it in the future, instead of trying to take all the textures reprojected from the camera, you can just take photos of each thing in your office from straight on and then apply those as their own textures individually and then just have the object properly textured. I'll be doing that next time. Now next I wanted shadows to interact properly. If I had little pieces of wall debris showing up in front of all the props, I actually wanted shadows cast on them. So I decided to model all the props on my shelf. 
but just as basic primitives, we don't need anything crazy. But because it's not super accurate, it does kind of mess up with a few things. You can actually see up at the top here, there's a few artifacts, there's some weird kind of shadow issues around some of these objects in particular. This is because I didn't model everything, it's just basic shapes. If you want to get around this, you can photo scan all your objects, but I don't recommend doing that in the middle of your workflow because then you're going to have to move these, do the photo scan, put them back, and then they're no longer perfectly synced on top of each other. It's a whole thing. We'll do it more in depth another time. Next thing to do is to match the lighting in CG, just like you have in the real world. In my case, I have these two blue lights behind me, and because I want each piece of debris to get lit blue and have the same shadows, I need to match that in the computer, which also created an interesting challenge for the shadows because the way I did the background elements, I used an emissive shader, which means they can't receive shadows. So I had to create this little network to try and figure out a way to kind of blend between allowing shadows and having a super accurate texture projection. If you have a better way, drop it in the comments because I'm still very new at Blender. Next up for destruction, I wanted to have a very specific way the wall broke. So I took a screenshot of myself, brought it into Photoshop and figured out where kind of I wanted this to happen. Then I took the clean image of my office along with a few different lighting variations and drew the shape that I was going to want. I brought that back into Blender and projected it onto the wall. That way I could go from any angle and see exactly how that wall needed to be cut apart. So I used the knife tool, cut it out, made it its own separate piece of geometry for that little chunk in the wall. So now I have one main wall that I was able to hide and reveal an outer piece of the wall and that inner block. The inner piece I use cellular fracture to break it up and make it into a lot of little pieces. I also did this entire process live on stream. So by the way, if you want to see me do this kind of stuff live, we will be doing much more of this kind of thing down on my Twitch. So link below for that. And while we're at it, let's also hit the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this and subscribe if you haven't already, ring that bell and let's get back into it. The effect simulation was kind of a pain to figure out. It's actually not hard to figure out how to do the rigid body stuff. I just had a lot of issues. For example, all these little, you know, fragmented pieces at the bottom dance around long after the simulation should be over. I don't know why they're dancing around. I could not figure that out. I'm assuming it's something with Blender Solver. I don't know. For each individual piece of debris, you want to set the calculation mode to mesh. That way it actually looks at the entire mesh as the collision object and not just kind of a basic primitive shape as a bounding box around it, which wouldn't allow it to land inside the shelf as you can see it does here. It takes longer to calculate that way, but it adds to the realism if you need it. Now, if you are doing all of this as an effect that you want to put as your background, what you need to make sure is the case is that you have the first and the last frame end up being the same thing. And I also recommend having a buffer so it doesn't just start and stop right at the edges. You want to have a little bit of breathing room so that you have some time to either disable the effect before it loops again or just give it a second before it does. So I knew I wanted the wall to explode and then revert back into not being destroyed, which is tricky. How would that ever make sense? Luckily, I have this infinity gauntlet. I figured may as well use it. Let's use the time stone. So I kind of had that in mind going forward. I didn't do it in Blender, but you could do it. But I figured I'd just do it after I rendered. What was important is I needed this area behind the wall to be empty, to be transparent. Also, you can see when I turn this on and off, it jumps a little bit. The colors are not quite as matched. I don't have my curtains up to block some light. I also messed up the aspect ratio, so it's not perfect, but it gets the point across. You probably didn't notice when I first started the video. And if you did, meh. So I rendered this out as TIFF files with alpha. That way I would be able to stitch the image sequence together and keep that hole in the wall and swap it out for something else later. If you were going to take this straight into OBS for streaming or you were just going to put it in After Effects or something and you don't want to deal with a bunch of uncompressed TIFFs because that might take a while to render, you could just put a green or blue plane back there. That way you can green screen or blue screen. Just do a chroma key effect later and that would work inside of OBS as well. So if you're bypassing After Effects, that would be my recommendation. The last thing is if you are going to do any kind of a time remapping effect, like I'm going to have this kind of go back and forth, you need to make sure that you render in a high enough frame rate that you have enough frames to stretch it out. If you render it at 24 frames per second and then you try to slow it down, you're going to get this little stuttery artifact thing that happens here. I rendered this in 60 frames per second, but I also was playing it back in 60 frames per second. So I miscalculated. I should have rendered it at like 90 or something just so I had more frames to make it slow-mo at 60 or maybe 120 if I wanted to really go crazy, but I didn't want that much data. So whatever. But if you are trying to be convincing, that's a big part of it. So just keep it in mind or maybe don't do time remapping stuff as your first try. First thing I did was the background compositing. Super easy. I literally just put an object back there and it shows through because I had alpha. Next up was the time stone. Three main pieces for that. I created this circle thing in Photoshop and I just brought it in, used it as a layer, put a bunch of effects on it, rough and edges, uh, some different colors and lighting, shine effects, things like that, and animated all the little Sanskrit icons that I created and 
There you go. I also have these little 3D rings around the gauntlet that's using Trapcode DAO. I use all of Red Giant stuff, so the Trapcode suite and the VFX suite are my main two tools for doing this kind of stuff. After animating those elements and the glow, this uh, optical flare effect from Video Copilot, classic, I wanted it to be subtle, but also something you could see without having to look too hard for it. Now everything goes into Premiere where I do the sound design. So first I did the time effects just with clips from the movie, just different sound effects I pulled from Doctor Strange and Infinity War. And then all the sound of the debris. With a little bit more time, things I would add to make this better overall, I would improve the frame rate so I have smoother playback, make the mass of those pieces feel a little bit better. I would add dust elements. It'd be cool to do that in 3D, but I don't need to. I could just do an After Effects. I would also add more wall construction. One of the things I don't like about this, so if you work on this type of a thing, add more wall construction. Most people on the internet, whenever this type of a tutorial happens, it's always just a piece of geometry that fractures and breaks into a lot of little pieces, and that's fine but having dust, having different layers of wall, it'll be a lot more convincing. So if you have some different two by fours of wood that you put in there and have those splinter in an interesting way, have you know the drywall versus maybe there's some insulation that pops out of the wall, maybe whatever the material on the other side of the wall, if it's brick or concrete, maybe that comes through as well. So you have multiple layers of different elements, textured differently, fractured differently, with different physics settings, it's gonna be a lot more realistic when it all breaks apart. So. That's something I'll probably do in a future video. Let me know if you wanna see that, but that would be another thing I would add if I could. Now working it in broadcast is easy enough. All you have to do is switch to background replacement, turn it on and set up the wall and you'll be able to see the little preview of how it's working. You'll notice though that no sound happens. There's no sound playing through it. So there are a few different ways you can make that work. If you're trying to do this live in a Zoom meeting on Twitch, on YouTube, whatever it is you're doing, it's gonna be very unconvincing without the sound. So in my case, I'm using the Go XLR. I have a whole video, by the way, on my office tour, studio workspace, all the stuff I use. This is not a super cheap piece of equipment. Most people don't have this. They're also out of stock right now, but this is what I use. And I actually have the MP3 audio file from this video as a separate asset. So when I trigger this, I also hit the button on my Go XLR and they end up happening at the same time. I'll show you exactly how that works. I hit the button and I hit it. And then there you go. Aside from the Go XLR, there's a ton of different ways you can do it. You can use the Stream Deck, you can use all kinds of different soundboard software. You could also do it in OBS. So if you are streaming, you could probably just have a different scene that is your camera, another scene that is this overlay. And maybe NVIDIA will give us an option at some point to have audio through this. This is a new tool. The camera effects are still in beta. But the coolest thing about all this is that everything I did in this video is free. You don't have to pay for any of what I just did and you can use it in all these cool creative ways that really no one's ever done before. NVIDIA Broadcast app just came out. In the same way that most people use a green screen to put themselves in other locations, beaches, things like that, my recommendation is to find something interesting to do that no one else is, such as using a background you're already in, it's perfectly integrated, you can barely tell, and then you can have all kinds of cool stuff happening that are just gonna catch people off guard. But I'd love to know what you thought of this video. Please give me some notes in the comments about things you liked, if you wanna see more stuff like this, what you would wanna see me do live, if we were gonna do more versions of this, more different things in the background happening. And if you make anything cool like this, I'd love to see it. Tag me on Twitter, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff, links are below. And if you wanna support the channel, there's a link to my Patreon down below. And if you wanna see this kind of stuff live, again, ask questions, talk more about it. A link to my Twitch down below. I'm live on Tuesdays and Thursdays and we do all kinds of stuff like this. If you like this video, please hit this button. It does make a difference and it helps YouTube give this video to more people and helps grow the channel. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.